Hi and welcome everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Pure Funky Music. Funky music from the 70s, this time a lot of black exploitation and Afro funk. We start off with the tree the hard way. I've been lucky, found two new black exploitation soundtracks, me very happy. Um, there's a lot of soul on these two. Uh, the first one is the music is done by the impressions. And it really has got that early 70s harmony soul. Sounds beautiful. The, the front cover is very, very nice. I mean, this is what you expect. This is what you want to see. And the back cover has some nice shots of the movie. Really. The best song of the album is the very last one uh, because most of them are uh, not instrumental only the last one I think or maybe one on the first side but, uh, the one that is instrumental it's classic we really, I mean really really great great stuff on this one And I love it that there's songs, they never end. I mean, just at the point that you think it stops, it starts off again. The next one is uh, Let's Do It Again. Here the singing is done by the Staple Stingers. And I think it's my first album by the Staple Singers because um, the voice on this one, it reminds me constantly of um, Gladys Knight. <laughs> It has this beautiful, beautiful sound. And then it has that funkiness of black exploitation. It has mixed everything for me together into one. I did not show you the label on the last one. It was the Buddha Records. Um, but it is uh, released by Curtain Records, so that's Kurt Mayfield's own label. This is this one and you can hear that the sound is similar, it has that same great vibe to it. The music, I, I think the last one was 70, 74 or 75, let me double check. Yeah, this one was 74 and this one is 75. Yeah, so we are right at the end of the Black Exploitation uh, movies, or at least for the great, great soundtracks. I mean, just look at the cover art, you know you have something. And the good thing is, these albums are not that expensive. And now it's time to move to the Afrofunk albums. I got lucky this time. There's quite a few. And um, very nice ones. Well, the cover shows immediately what we're talking about. Missing parts again. Um, this one is again in Nigeria, CMI. I, I would love to say more about these albums, but it's very hard to find anything on the history. Um, this one has a lot of organ in it. And look at the back cover, that photo. Luckily, the corners are gone, but there's nothing missing. Those heads, I want to have one of those heads. That's cool. And I must say, the photos on these albums, they really tell a story. Baby, 
Usually the covers are pretty faded. That's also true for the next one. And this album has also something strange. There's always something, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there's hanging parts loose or it is coming loose. Every time I play it, I can take something off. It's like that sweater, when you pull, it gets shorter. I'm afraid the same thing is true for this album. Next one is Rock of Ages. I don't know the year. Um, oh, it says on the front, 1975. And it's too bad that pictures are faded, but again, it's just fun to look at the pictures. It has that, it has the beat going on and it's funky and in a way it's new, they, they, it's refreshing. And what I believe is that the organs they play, usually the instruments weren't cheap, so they took the organ from the church and that's what they played on. And that's often why you have that typical organ sound on these albums. This one is on the label Victory Sounds. Uh, I don't know this label, it's one of the first I have on this label. And if I look at the, the number, it says VRS003. Oh, this is again one where in the dead wax, I don't know if the camera picks it up. Again, in the dead wax, the, the numbering is really big. That goes through the runout groove. It, it still amazes me that they did it this way. The next one is by Sonny Osokun. If you pronounce it that way. And he was there for there was a luckily or lucky on Discogs a little bit of information on this one. He was in a lot of bands, or he started a lot of bands, starting in the, in the 60s, in 71 he had that band, he started it, and again in uh, halfway 70s. Backside has a very nice photo of him. And this one is EMI, but I think I have the French version. Which is Pate Marconi. And again, you have that same organ playing. According to Oh, he started. Gospel is the music that I play. This reminds me of Tim Maya. When he was in the recational, when he found the book, read the book. This song is very similar in the sense that he's also explaining what he believes, why he believes it, and why he follows this direction. And what I noticed from the guys who have been reading and changing their mind, their view of the world, it's always very funky on this record. That's why I let it play a little bit longer. The vibe on this one is a little bit more, I would not say folky, but it's more incorporating traditional songs. And he's not singing in English, so 
So most of the Nigerian albums are in English. I don't know which language this one is. I don't know what he's singing about. What is nice on this one is a lot of the artists playing on it, they are mentioned on the back side. And that's when you see uh, different connections, because one of the vocals will be on the album I will send uh, show later. So this was all Nigeria. Now we move to Ivory Coast. Uh, I have not that many albums from the Ivory Coast. Let me first show the label because it's very nice. It's Alabi Records. It's just fun to watch some of these albums and see what's going on. But... This, even, this one is even more traditional. And you can see it already on the cover. I don't know what they're doing, if this is done during a concert. But they're clearly playing with fire and some people take a little bit of distance. Not really sure if it's going to end well. But again, the photos on these albums, they're just beautiful. They really tell a story. And, or I must say, I feel like there's a story behind these albums. The cover, the photos they show. On the back side, there's unfortunately no photos. But, I mean, at those times, it must have been an adventure. Music really played a big part of their life. And for the last album, we're moving back to Nigeria. And the album before I showed was uh, Sony. Sonny Okoku, Okosun, uh, he organized a lot of music and the vocals on that one are done by Dan Ian and he's on this album. And he started his own band, uh, Dan Ian Spades. Lovely, lovely day rock phase two. And that's what you see a lot and that's why I like to know more about history because it all seems to connect all the groups, they know each other or they play it or if they're from the same region they play together. You can hear there's a little bit of side movement going on. Because if I think if you give a Nigerian a guitar, electric guitar, this is the kind of music he will play. You can just see in the, on the back the smiles on their face when they have this stuff going on. I mean, it's great. Hope you enjoyed it also. And see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.